Stocks were clobbered today as the S&P 500 fell over 1% for the first time since August 23rd. Much of that was as a result of a weaker than expected ISM manufacturing number here this morning. Losses also accelerated off of some news within the online brokerage industry where Charles Schwab said they're going to cut stock trading commissions down to zero. Uh, what followed was an absolute massacre in shares of TD Ameritrade and also E-Trade. So we'll take a look at all of that. We'll then see where we stand with things from a posture perspective. Of course, we've been bearish with the market forecast intermediate posture for the last week. And of course, we'll continue to retain that bearishness after today's bloodletting. But I wanted to look at a trade application example example within one of the areas of the market that's holding up a little bit better than others, a consumer staples area, and look at a above average dividend yielding company that should be able to retain its dividend policy into the future. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Market Outlook video presented by MarketScholars.com. I'm your host, Brandon Van Zee. It's October 1st, 2019. First of all, if you're new, welcome aboard. Remember to go over to YouTube, click subscribe. While you're there, check out our description area to sign up for our email distribution list so that way you can be alerted to whenever we do post these videos. In addition to finding out which stocks in the S&P 500 have overbought and oversold cluster signals. In addition to YouTube, we're heavy users of Twitter. My handle is at Brandon Van Zee. I would encourage you to follow me. And also, if you get value out of these YouTube videos, make sure you click like and retweet on these Market Outlook related posts. Lastly, we have a presence on Facebook Facebook as well. Feel free to join our group at the web address embedded in the logo in front of you. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the charts. As you can see, I've got a slightly different chart pulled up here to begin our discussion. Uh, this is chart 6D. Uh, I like to pull this particular chart up when we have an above average sized uh, day like we did today, just to kind of get a sense of how often uh, days like this actually do occur. As you can see down below here, kind of where I'm pointing with my uh, cursor, we have this uh, red line that is coming down below one. Now, how you're going to read this is there's this black line in the middle that represents 0% move. And you're either going to have a green bar or a red bar. The green bars, of course, would represent days where the stock market closes up. The red bars would represent days when the stock market closes down. When the red bar goes all the way down here below the blue line, it basically means that we had a 1% move lower in this particular case. And you'll notice the last time we had a 1% move lower was on August 23rd, as you can see right here. In fact, on that day, uh, we breached that orange line a level lower than that, and that was a 2% move on that particular day. So it's been a little over a month since we've had a, a big downsized day like this, but I think we could all agree that 1% moves are not the end of the world. Uh, we get them a lot. Uh, this is a, a one-year uh, view that we're looking at here. And as you can see, if you don't count today, uh, the amount of 1% moves we've had in the S&P 500 over the last 12 months have been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So the point I'm trying to make is, yes, today was an ugly day. Uh, you know, uh, down days in the market aren't fun for those of you that might be long stocks, uh, but uh, they are part of the admission uh, to be able to get into the stock market uh, without the possibility of risk and loss of funds, uh, you don't have that opportunity for gains to the upside. Uh, if you were looking for an investment vehicle that uh, gave you no possibility of loss to the downside, you of course could go down to the bank and get a CD and uh, you know, you'd be relegated to a, a pretty low interest rate, but nonetheless, at least you won't have to take risk. Most of you are aware that when you enter into the stock market, you're going to take risk. Uh, and the reason you're willing to do that is because stocks do tend to go up over the long haul. And you know, despite today's move, lower, we continue to be very close to all-time highs, which was just hit here uh, this past summer at 3,027 uh, on the S&P 500. So yes, ugly day on the market, but by no means was it uh, an exaggerated day, you know, a, a multi-standard deviation type of a day. It was just par for the course, the, the type of day that we see quite often every single year in the stock market. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get back on track with our normal view. Let's go over to chart 4B in this case. 
And as a reminder, these uh, uh, charts are updated as of a couple of weeks ago. For those of you that are premium members of Market Scholars, all 47 of the charts actually now uh, are available. We added one just over the weekend, as a matter of fact. So let me point that out real quick. That's going to be chart 6K here in this particular case. Uh, and it's going to have some nifty uh, information in regards to uh, intraday volume that can be somewhat difficult uh, to find in many areas. Uh, it's loading up down below here because there's so much going into this code, uh, but you can kind of get the sense of that. So wanted to point that out really quick because many of you uh, uploaded all 46 of our charts a couple weeks ago and weren't aware that this is now the 47th chart that you're looking at right here. This is 6K, so make sure you do go up and upload that one if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's now get back over here to chart 4B. So as we're looking at this particular chart setup, remember this is going to be our way to look at four different uh, equity indices here in the United States all at one time to see if they're kind of acting like one another or if there are any sort of um, you know distinguishing elements of the charts. As I mentioned in the intro, we're bearish on all four of our charts. Now that isn't anything that's news, right? Uh, we've had a bearish posture uh, for the last week or so in most of these charts cases. Remember when the background color of the chart is pink like it is in all four of these charts, that means that we've had a bearish posture during that entire time period. So as an example, on the Russell 2000, we've had a bearish posture since September 24th. Uh, and some of these other ones were a little bit more recent, but nonetheless, we've had a bearish posture for the last three or four days. So fortunately, you know, we didn't have to suffer as much uh, of uh, with, with the market pullback today because we already had a heads up uh, that uh, our posture was changing from uh, bullish to bearish earlier. So uh, where it stands now is that the Russell 2000 and the NASDAQ both have not only a bearish intermediate posture according to the market forecast, but they also have red moving averages. Remember that the moving average turns red when price is below a falling moving average. Now note that the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones are also trading below their 30-day moving averages in this particular case after today's sell-off, but because the moving averages are still rising, its moving average color is yellow at this point. Now, if there's enough pressure applied here in coming days and weeks, then of course that moving average will start rolling over and it'll start changing uh, to a red color on those as well. So uh, of the four indices that we're looking at here, it does appear that the blue chip heavy indices of the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones are a little bit more stable right now than what we're finding out of the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000. I mentioned before that the S&P 500 was down over 1%. It was actually 1.23% to be exact. Uh, you'll find that the Dow Jones was uh, down 1.28%. Uh, the NASDAQ composite was down 1.13% and the Russell 2000 was down 1.97%, nearly 2% there. Uh, also, I mentioned in the intro that we saw a lot of um, online brokers get just absolutely eviscerated here uh, today off of the news that Charles Schwab is planning on reducing their uh, trading commissions to zero uh, on their stocks and ETFs and, and much of their options trades as well. And so that caused quite the, the chaotic moves in many of those names. Now, keep in mind that uh, David and I are no longer affiliated with, with TD Ameritrade. We once were, we no longer are, um, but uh, certainly uh, still uh, know folks over there and wish them well in their endeavors as well. And of course, we want them to be a strong organization because we're using uh, their Thinkorswim platform right here. And we want them to be able to support that uh, in the future as well. But these are, are, are tough times. It's tough sliding for the online brokerage industry uh, right now with uh, net interest margins uh, getting crunched. And of course, now uh, a drop in, in a lot of the fees across the board. Remember that interactive brokers was already reducing fees in many of their cases down to next to nothing uh, a week or two ago. And so uh, Schwab kind of matching them here today uh, is basically pushing the industry where a lot of folks figured it was going anyway, which is to commissions of zero. The, the, the real question was how fast would they get there? So uh, just to give you a sense of how big the moves were in the bro online brokerage industry today, let's take a look at Schwab first off. Schwab was down 10%. Remember, they were the ones that made the announcement and their stock dropped uh, about 10% here today. Uh, E-Trade was down 16%. Uh, and of course, you know, they didn't have any announcement today. They were just 
Uh, shareholders were reacting to the news from Schwab. Uh, Interactive Brokers, which is IBKR, was down about 9 or 10% today as well. Uh, but IBKR had actually gone up prior to today uh, after it had released its news. And so really the give back on uh, Interactive Brokers was really not quite as violent as we saw on a lot of the others, uh, considering the circumstances. And then last but not least, Ameritrade. You know, in, in all the years that I was associated with them, I do not recall a day where one quarter of their value disappeared with the snap of the fingers. But that's what happened today. Uh, AMTD was down 25.6% or in this case, actually 25.7%. Uh, either way, one quarter of their, their, their worth as an organization was uh, gone just just like that. Uh, and so uh, made for quite the uh, interesting day from that perspective. Now, keep in mind, uh, TD Ameritrade is kind of unique from the aspect of it is a big American organization, but it's not in the S&P 500. Um, remember, it's actually owned, about 42% of its business is owned by uh, TD Bank up in Canada, and another uh, big chunk of their business is owned by T. Rowe Price, which I think was also down today uh, as part of a result there as well. But anyway, TD Ameritrade, because it's not in the S&P 500, uh, did not negatively affect it, uh, its price today. Uh, but nonetheless, shareholders certainly feeling some pain as a result of that uh, particular news announcement. And obviously, those of you that watch this video, uh, hopefully are retail-oriented investors and traders, remember that lowering of fees in the end is hopefully a good thing uh, for all of us. So uh, despite the uh, downward action in those share prices of those specific companies today, hopefully uh, from the, the, the broader investor and trader universe, it actually ends up being a, a win uh, for everybody as we get to save more of our own money when we're placing our trades. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of other charts here. Let's go ahead and take a look at a three green arrows chart in this case. This is chart 4D. Uh, as you can see, we've got three red arrows all across the board. And there is something new to report here because the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones with that crossing below uh, the 30-day moving average there actually put in their third red arrows. Remember, the other indices, the, the Russell 2000 and the NASDAQ, both had three red arrows already. Uh, they've had that for the last four days or so. Uh, but the uh, S&P 500 and the Dow Jones both uh, just uh, had that condition exist as of today's close. Now, because we are so close to the moving average, especially on the Dow Jones, if we get a pop back higher tomorrow, uh, that red arrow would disappear just as quickly as well. So we've got to be uh, careful making too much of this. Uh, generally speaking, if you look at where we're trading right now, for example, with the uh, Dow Jones, we're still in the middle of the range of the last three months, right? This is a three month chart that we're looking at here. And, uh, you know, with the Dow Jones at about 26,500 or thereabouts, uh, it's basically right in the middle of our low, uh, which was uh, breached there on August 15th and our high, uh, which was back here on July 16th. So um, despite the what seemed to be a, a, a heavy feeling market today, uh, we really haven't broken down in a big way. So it uh, doesn't mean that we can't going forward. Uh, obviously, today was the, the first day of October and the first day of the final quarter of the year. And many of you will recall what happened during the final quarter of 2018. Uh, somewhat uncharacteristically, uh, stocks got absolutely annihilated from October to uh, December. Normally, that does not happen. October generally is a dice year uh, month for the market, but November and December are usually quite rosy as we head into the Santa Claus rally and all of that. But last year, uh, it certainly didn't play out that way. So there might be a little bit of nerves out there right now, uh, just because uh, we all have memories as traders. And uh, we might be wondering if this is part two of that uh, fourth quarter meltdown that we experienced last year. But as it stands right now, we're still just simply in the middle of the range of where we've been trading for the last three months. So I don't think it's time to, to sound the alarms quite yet. Uh, let's take a look here at another chart. In this case, let's go to our, um, let's go to the, the, the 1040 crossover method chart. All right, so here, uh, as you can see, uh, the, the new things that I, I have to, to share with you on this chart's front is that we do have price below the 10 
week moving average. That's why you have that red arrow right there above the S&P 500, that red arrow right there above the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We actually got the red arrow on the NASDAQ last week, and the same thing goes for uh, the Russell 2000. So it does seem like the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 are kind of the, the, the laggards from this perspective as well, uh, and that the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones are holding up a little bit better. But in all four of these uh, charts cases, we now have price trading below a 10 week moving average. And uh, note what I mentioned in the intro that the S&P 500 was trading below its 50 day moving average. Remember that the 10 week and the 50 day moving average are essentially the same thing since there are five trading days in every week. Uh, but uh, as it stands right now, that is new information because remember prior to that, we've actually been on a pretty decent run in the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones where we bounced really nicely out of August. And now all of a sudden it looks like you know, October is is doing its best to try to e erase what good gains that we had uh, in in September. So uh, we don't want to make too much of it again. Uh, you know, it is just one piece of information. You can see that the last uh, two times that we traded below that orange line. So right there, we got a red arrow on the Dow Jones, and right there we did as well. Note that prices went down. But the colored background of the chart did not change because the moving averages themselves did not cross over. Now, of course, the Russell 2000 is different. That one did cross over and it remains in a bearish posture, just like it has ever since it crossed over in the first week of August. But on our other three charts, that still has not occurred yet. We've had a bullish posture from a longer term perspective with this 1040 crossover method on a weekly chart uh, since going back to earlier this year. So several months we've had that posture. So as it stands right now, again, a little bit of a disturbance with a 1% down day here today, yet uh, we've seen two other times here recently where we've closed below that moving average, yet the moving averages uh, just were not pushed low enough to actually cross one another because it needs to be consistently lower. A lot of times when we went lower, we popped right back up. We went lower, we popped right back up. So will be will this be one of those times again? Uh, only, only time will tell, but uh, for right now, we make the assumption that the longer term trends are still intact. All right, let's now have a discussion about some 12 grid analysis. For that, I'm gonna come on over here to chart uh, 5A and start off with our asset classes, 12 grid. And as a reminder, with this new uh, charting setup that we have here, uh, we have uh, four different colors that can exist uh, for the most part here on these uh, 12 grid analysis here. You're either gonna have dark pink like we have right here with uh, TLT or light pink like we have here with BNDX, uh, or you're gonna have dark green like we do with the US dollar uh, or light green, which I can't show you here because none of these particular charts have light green. But what distinguishes those um, aspects is whether we would consider we would be considered to have a strongly bullish posture. If we do, then we're going to have a dark green background. If we have a weakly bullish posture, uh, meaning that the intermediate line is traveling up and between 20 and 50 on the market forecast, then we'd have that light green color, which again, we don't have in this view. Maybe we'll see one here in a little bit. Um, and then the opposite is true with the bearish postures. If you have a strongly bearish posture, it's gonna have that dark pink background. If you have a weakly bearish posture, meaning that the intermediate line is traveling down between 80 and 50, in that case, then you're gonna have that light pink color there. So uh, I know we're all kind of getting used to the new setup here. It might take a little bit of time, but hopefully that helps you remember it a bit more. So what I generally look for when we're looking at these 12 grids is just where are the best looking trends and are there any key trend reversals we'll want to be aware of? Now, as I look at this, I would say that the best looking trend in, from my perspective is the US dollar. However, that comes with an asterisk. And that asterisk is that we have a, a bearish engulfing candle, a pretty violent one, I might add here as well. Remember, a lot of times when you're looking at engulfing candles, what's important is just that the prior day's body gets engulfed. In this case, of course, you're engulfing not only the prior day's body, but also the prior day's wick. In fact, you almost engulfed the prior day before that one as well. That's a pretty ugly looking candle right there. Uh, as we close near the lows of the session on the US dollar. But I think 
you know, if you're honest with yourself and you're looking at that trend, you're still going to say that's clearly a, a, a security that's in an uptrend. And we use UUP as our proxy for the US dollar in this particular case. So that's where we have the strongest trend is strength in the US dollar. So if you're, you know, from the United States and you're looking to take a, a global trip, perhaps uh, now is the time to do it as your, your money will stretch a little bit further there. Um, in terms of any sort of trend reversals that I'm seeing here, you know, I do want to make sure I keep my eye on what's going on with TLT and gold, this chart and this chart. Um, those two both had a dynamic run to the upside for much of the late summer. Uh, both of them are starting to falter in a way where it's becoming a bit more concerning. Um, you know, if, if you spend a little bit of time below the moving average, like we saw here with GLD, maybe two or three weeks ago, that's not the end of the world. That does happen. You'll notice over here on TLT, it spent a little bit of time below the moving average and then corrected course and went back into the direction in which it was going. Um, what's a little bit more damaging in this particular case with gold is that not only is it trading still below that moving average, but it broke down and crossed a key horizontal support level on that, uh, on that particular security. Uh, and you can now see that the moving average itself on GLD has been read for the last three or four sessions. You'll note as an example back here on TLT, when it was trading below its moving average, it was only a red moving average for about two of those sessions. So the longer that GLD stays below that falling moving average, the more concern there is that that once really hot trade idea, whether it's the gold uh, miners or the, the gold bullion itself, that is starting to be an area of concern right there. So just be a little bit more cautious because that's an area that can move very, very quickly. Uh, you know, it's not like watching paint dry when you're talking about the gold miners. They're going to move up and down very violently. And uh, you just got to babysit your positions a bit more. So as it stands right now, I am growing a little bit more concerned about gold. Now, the good news is uh, that gold did finish higher today, actually had a pretty brilliant day. It was up 0.55% today and wasn't quite a bullish engulfing candle, but very, very close to it here today. So perhaps um, it's due for a little bit of a dead cat bounce here. But we'll want to watch to see if it does continue to bounce higher, how does it react to this moving average? If it starts bouncing down and back, then that's a, a bad sign. If it can get back up and through that moving average and start establishing a new support zone above the moving average, then maybe there's hope for a, another move higher. So right now I'm kind of leaning a little bit more bearishly on gold than I had uh, been for much of the summer, uh, just because the charts are changing. And you know that um, dictates that uh, you should be changing your mind regarding uh, your trades as well. And that's kind of where I, I fall in line with gold right now. And you know TLT is not quite as bad as gold, but it, it has the same type of feel to it, where it's been spending a lot of time below that moving average here in the last two or three weeks. Yes, yeah, so this one is closer to the moving average, so it's closer to being able to break out and establish a new range. But nonetheless, um, it hasn't dis decided to do that for the last four or five uh, trading sessions. It's got right up to that moving average and decided not to cross it and stay on the underside of it. So that's a little bit nerve wracking there uh, as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next set of 12 grids. In this case, we're going to look at our U.S. sectors 12 grid. This is chart 5C for those of you that are following along at home. All right, so as we look at this, you can see there are two green uh, charts on the board, and that belongs to the staples and the utilities. Now, I mentioned in the intro that we're going to be talking about the consumer staples in our trade application example a little bit later here, so keep that in the back of your mind. Remember, that's one of the only areas that seems to be holding up. Now, all of our sectors were down today, so just to be clear on that, all 11 of these that you see in front of you, and then the 12th chart up here with the S&P 500, of course, was down as well. So all of them were down today, but you can see that of those that were down, it does appear that the utilities and the staples were the ones that held up the best. The utilities were only down 0.23% and the staples were only down 0.26%. So not bad at all considering the fact that the S&P 500 itself was down well over 1% there. So as we look at these charts, you can see that the staples and the utilities are the only two charts on the board that are trading above a rising 30-day moving average. They're the only two. So not only do they have bullish intermediate postures, which is what, what is painting that background color, but they're also the only two that has a green moving average right now. Note that the real estate space uh, did up until today. Uh, today, 
stock moved lower and you can see it's now painted slightly red there at the end of that moving average same thing could be said for energy which slashed dramatically below that moving average we also saw that with the materials we now have a red moving average there uh, we saw the industrials come down it's got a, a, a yellow moving average same thing goes for the discretionary so as you can see today was a pretty violent day not just in terms of price performance but how the charts look after the storm has gone through. And a lot of them uh, have, have a lot of work to do to regain our confidence because uh, all of a sudden we're seeing price below moving averages in all of our sectors in the United States except for the staples and the utilities. Those are two of the places where you might be able to hide out. Um, you know, concerning is healthcare. Notice that healthcare is really breaking down. Uh, it was down a percent today, but it had already been close to uh, multi-month lows. And remember, that's a little bit weird. We talked about this on Monday in my top-down trend trading class where we do our sector rotation analysis and how it's a little bit peculiar that healthcare, which is sometimes known as a kind of a quasi-defensive type of a sector, uh, is uh, struggling as much as it is considering that the other defensive areas are holding up much, much better. Uh, but uh, that might be a good time to, to bring you on over to the internet as well. And as you can see with the sector selector, healthcare actually dropped to second to worst. Now remember, I put this together on Friday night. So this is already two trading sessions old at this point. I had no advanced knowledge of what was gonna happen this week. But uh, so far what we've seen is that healthcare has not helped its cause. So we already kind of knew going into Monday's session that healthcare was a bit of a laggard uh, in this current market. Whereas we were finding strength in utilities, real estate, and financials. Notice that staples did tick higher by one slot there in our ranking system. Remember, I'm using 10 different technical indicators to uh, rank out these uh, different sectors and I'm doing it on an equal weighted basis not a market cap weighted basis so slightly different technique but still gives us a heads up and an understanding of what's happening with sector rotation and we did see a firming up of the of the staples right there also while I'm over here just wanted to say thank you to those of you that regularly go out of your way uh, to click like on our market outlook related tweets out there 107 of you did so uh, for me the last time I did the video which would have been on Thursday so thank you very much for that Anytime we're up and over 100, uh, I don't question uh, whether we have the time or not to do these videos. If we're below 100, then I start questioning that. So thank you for uh, keeping uh, your uh, end of the bargain up there and uh, making sure that you're clicking like for us uh, each and every day. Uh, it does help us expand to a greater audience than David and I would be able to on our own. Also, a uh, quick mention that uh, I taught the uh, dividend growth investing class today. Uh, we covered the financial sector. If you're interested in that, that uh, particular recording is now posted. And remember, that is available for those of you that are on our Plus subscription model. Uh, and then David taught his directional option strategy class earlier today that you can check out as well. Tomorrow, uh, we've got our options inventory uh, trading class at 11 a.m. Eastern time for David's class. And then for my class, we've got our factor-based swing trading class uh, where we've been on quite the hot streak with winning 16 out of our last 19 trades. And we'll see if we can keep up uh, the hot hand starting tomorrow. So join us for that if you are a premium member of Market Scholars. All right. Uh, so with that information, out of the way let's now talk about our trade application example and uh, again with the knowledge that we've just learned that the consumer staples are the area that seems to be holding up the best in this a uh, little bit more of a difficult market that we've come across here recently uh, let me come on over here and first of all pull up chart let's see 4a I just want to show you just real quick one thing that, that stood out to me in regards to ticker symbol MO. This is Altria Group, and of course, this is a very controversial company. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Uh, I, you know, I, I applaud uh, what they do from a business model perspective or anything along those lines. But uh, it is true that what they do is legal. Uh, at least the last that I checked. And so, while uh, Big Tobacco has a bad name, doesn't necessarily mean that it is always a poor investment choice. In fact, for those of you that are fans of Professor Jeremy Siegel, you'll know that in his uh, two very popular books that. Uh, uh, Philip Morris companies were uh, some of the best performing uh, stocks in the S&P 500 over the last half of a century. So there is certainly some investment appeal on occasion to these types of companies. But what's caught my eye with Altria lately, as they've been getting caught up in this negative news cycle about Juul and vaping and all this, remember they own, I think it's 35% of Juul. So they're not the 
100% owner of Jewel, but they have a substantial uh, amount invested in that company. And so if there are is, if there is legislation to stop uh, Jewel from selling to you know miners and selling in dirt certain retail establishments, that could certainly uh, affect MO negatively. But one thing that did stand out to me is if we went to a 20-year monthly candle chart, notice what is happening right now. Now, of course, today is the first day of the month, so we got to be careful with that. But what we can say factually is that August and September ended with monthly clusters. In other words, the green, the blue, and the red lines were in the lower reversal zone on a monthly candle. This is a 20-year monthly chart. Now, to get a sense of how rare that is, I've gone back on a 20-year chart here, and I can show you that the last time that occurred was way the heck back here in 1999. Yes, last century is the last time that happened uh, to ticker symbol MO. Uh, now, at that time, this stock was around a $5 stock on a split adjusted basis. And of course, as you can see, that would have been a, a brilliant time to be buying the stock of that com company if you were comfortable with it. Now, another thing that people think about when they think about ticker symbol MO is dividends. Um, that's the other thing that I wanted to bring up from a separate chart. This uh, chart that I have right here, let's kind of zoom in during this time period, uh, is chart two-way. It's a chart that we use uh, in some of my dividend classes. And what I wanted to point out was this yellow line down below here. I have the ability to kind of customize uh, the dividend stair step to different yield levels. In this particular case, I'm using an 8% dividend yield level. And the reason I'm using 8% is because recently, Altria became an 8% yielder. It is yielding 8.16% at the current juncture. That's a big yield. Um, even uh, in normal market environments, it's big. Uh, you know, when, when, when treasury yields are, are higher than they are today, with treasury yields so low, uh, it's an extraordinarily high yield. And a lot of times, the first thing you should be thinking if you see an extraordinarily high yield like this is whether it's safe or not. Uh, with MO, they actually have a multi-decade history of raising the dividend. And so I tend to think that despite this being a really eye-popping type of a yield, that it can still be viewed as safe. In fact, we've already had one time period in recent memory where Altria was yielding 8% and it never did cut its dividend during that time period. And that era that I'm referring to is back here where I'm circling the mouse kind of in the lower left-hand part of the chart. That was back in 2008. Notice that prices were crossing below that yellow dividend stair step line right there, which represents the 8% yield level. And again, that would have been a brilliant time to be buying this stock as the stock was trading around $16 or $17 at that time. So, you know, it went on a monstrous run from $17 all the way up to $77. It's been on a nosedive ever since then. But now that we're back here to this 8% zone, it does have me wondering if we're within the vicinity of forming a bottom. We might be a little bit early with this, without a doubt, uh, but I think there's at least a reasonable um, you know, expectation that income investors will start to support this company uh, sooner rather than later. Again, assuming that they don't go into some sort of you know, mass liquidation as a result of you know, politicians uh, formulating new rules or different things like that. But right now, I'd have to believe that an 8% uh, yielder in the consumer staple space uh, is an interesting one. And then you add to that the fact that it's got monthly clusters, uh, which we haven't seen since 1999. It makes it a highly intriguing situation. So we're just simply going to buy um, some shares here. So I'm going to right click on the chart. I'm going to go to buy. Um, and I am going to actually hang on just a second. I'm going to edit this. So that way we can buy it uh, at the price where it closed today, which was $41.16. And Let's do 150 shares in this particular case. I'll put that in there as a good till cancel just in case uh, we don't get filled first thing tomorrow. So I'm gonna click confirm and send and ship that off and we'll see if we can get filled on that first thing in the morning. All right, well, thank you for joining me. Quite a day in the market. Lots of interesting news stories there. Obviously, we have a bit of a negative tilt right now. Uh, we've had a bearish posture from an intermediate perspective for the last week or so, and today didn't do it any favors. We continue to have that bearish posture. However, if you're looking for areas that have been a bit more stable than others, it appears right now that it is the consumer staples and the utilities that are holding up a bit better. So uh, with that, I wanna wish you the best of success with your trades and your investments. If you got value out of tonight's video, please go 
over to Twitter and click like for us. We'd certainly appreciate that. And of course, David will be back with you tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye.